like Play-Doh. <laughs> I was like, man, I ain't cried in years. It just told me up. Because it's a hard thing. Then all of a sudden we get saved. We start seeking God. We want to know all the, all the parts. We want to know, you know, am I right? The knowledge removes passion and intimacy. And then we start measuring ourselves because of our receptivity to knowledge. And we miss it. And then that's where the disconnect comes from. You don't want to, the, the, the lifeline for a Christian is the heart. That's why the old saints had it going on. They had power. They didn't know, they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't have a lot of the stuff we got today. But they had some heart. When things need to get done, when things were going on, they had some heart. Shoot, I can think about the 90s. Because I'm a 90 person. I'm a 90s baby. I got born again in the 90s. And um, I've seen it. And uh, we had some nuts and flakes. You always do. But for the most part, these people were loving the Lord and everything. And you can feel the passion in the place. Because passion ain't coming from your head. Mm -mm. Your drive, your zeal, those are heart things. Those are elements of the heart. Those are characteristics of a surrendered heart. So if your heart is not surrendered to the Lord, if it's not pliable, it's not on the altar for lack of better position. <laughs> if it's not on the altar and you put your head on the altar thinking that you're going to bypass, you can't bypass. You, knowledge, will ne knowledge will never bring you into intimacy. It will justify everything else except you surrendering your heart. Good. It's the, it's the safest place for, for a believer. Knowledge. If your knowledge base is strong. And it's, and it's, and it's the greatest determinant, a detriment for a leader. Because a leader knows that if you get knowledge, it's a high possibility that we won't be moving. The only thing that can be adjusted is the heart. Because out of it flows the issues of life. Mm -hmm. And that word issues is not problems. <laughs> that word issue in Hebrew means the boundaries of your life. So if you want to reestablish your boundaries in your life, you want it to change, you have to change your heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Is that all right? When in my notes, I'm costing nothing. I feel like you see how get us to we, we, I'm telling you, because we're in the West, and the West is, no, 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 no. Sophia, wisdom, is relegated. We put a premium on knowledge. And, and let me just help you out. Education is not a sign that you have knowledge. Amen. Education is a sign that you have been informed Amen. through knowledge. Yes. That whatever study you've had, you've completed that study. <laughs> that ain't going well. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So when you get that degree, it's just a sign it doesn't say that you have ultimate knowledge. It just says you've met the requirements for the curriculum. That's it. Nothing else? Anybody want to agree with that? Same thing with us. We think because we get ordained, become an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, that we have an a, a unlimited source of wisdom. <laughs> no that just means that there's a assignment upon your life and God wants you to grow up and mature mm -hmm. and not to consume it on your own lust but to be a channel of blessing for somebody mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. that's all it means that God wants you to serve the house mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And that goes for if you decided not to go to the five fold and you think you're just going to stay hanging out in the pooey pews. You know, you can't walk around with a big head thinking I got to get knowledge. No, knowledge doesn't it doesn't necessitate maturity, and it doesn't justify vision. Oh yeah, what? Is that true, Jesus? Amen. <laughs> I sound like Siri. I have conversations with her. I bet you it was Siri. Wasn't it, wasn't it Siri? I, I bet you it sounded like her. Like she be having, I, I'm telling you, if you're walking through the house, I ain't even bothering her. Y'all be a player. I'll be like, what? Did anybody have a problem with Siri in the house? I'm like, girl, I ain't talking to you. Uh, yeah, I'm like, what the world? But we don't want to be disobedient to what God is showing and what Amen. God is declaring to our lives. Amen. So the law of fulfillment, firstly, has to be understood that we can't be disobedient, that we must comply fully to whatever God has assigned to our life. We must be fully persuaded in our spirit that this is the direction that God is taking us for the manifestation to come as proof positive that God's word is settled in the heavens is now settled in our hearts. Yeah. 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 Yep. Because Paul himself understood the reality of God's prophetic insight, God's divine instruction. That no matter what circumstance he was in, he had a persuasion that could not be dimmed. He said, I fought a good fight. I kept my course. I finished. I mean, I kept, hold on. I kept, hold on. What is that? I fought a good fight. I kept my faith. I kept my faith and finished the course. Thank you. I got some theologians in here. So he said, what God has appointed for my life. The prophetic vision that I got on the road to Damascus. Here I am, 37 years later, and I have been faithful Thank to the vision. Yeah. That I have not gone off course. Yeah. Amen. 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 Don't you want to be able to, at the end of your life say, yeah, I've done it, Lord, the way you wanted me to do it. I got no, you, look, why? If you turn around, don't look, don't look, cause they just looking all kind of funny, all kind of funny. So this is it. Is I'm gonna share this with you real quick. I want you to know that this same revelation that the Father has laid out for Him has been laid out for you. It would never be fulfilled by your own effort, not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit. It originated in the heart of God. Therefore, you need his instruction yes. to fulfill it. Yes. He is the author and a finisher of your faith. Yes. So it was hidden in him from the foundations. So it's imperative for us to have a live a life that's submitted to his spirit. And so we can follow the cadence that is set forth through prophetic vision. There's a cadence. There's a rhythm in the spirit. That belongs to us. There is a thing spoken by our Father that is being lodged into our consciousness. That will, if, that will, if, if we would receive it and have the uh, the ability to receive that engrafted word, to receive the impartation of what He's declared over our lives, and we receive it into our consciousness, then we have the power to fulfill it. Yes. And out of the power to fulfill it, there is a restraint. Or discipline that will begin to be evident in our lives. And out of that restraint, out of that discipline, it brings direction. It will cause our will to function at a high level. It will hold us fast to his purposes as it produces the change that he has assigned it to complete in our lives. So we've been given a grace which enables us to rise up in blessing. And fulfill the will of God in the earth, not only as a witness of the work of Jesus Christ, but also as the demonstration yeah. of the very presence and character of God. Yeah. Yeah. But you need to allow him to write. This is what I wrote. But you need God. Oh, no. But you need to allow God to write. I'm so glad we're not on national TV. <laughs> but you need to allow God to write his divine nature. Or his divine vision for you into your consciousness. 
once the vision has been divinely planted into your consciousness, this is good, y'all, because what I told you, you've been waiting for eight weeks. Once the vision has been divinely planted, I can go, next week we'll talk about how to really put the scriptures through it. And I'm, I want to help your spirit man, so I'm going to talk to your spirit man next week. I might, I might use a little bit more. Yeah, to help your spirit man. Okay, once the vision has been divinely planted into your consciousness, because, see, your consciousness is connected to your what? Your spirit. Your soul, your soul, your soul, my father. So consciousness is correct, connected to my soul. Some theologians say it's in your consciousness, your spirit. You know, so I, who cares? We got one. You know what I'm saying? We can't write the divide at this time, but we're just going to say we got one. So if, once we put it there, and not just in our mind, only then can it become the law of our life. Yes. So it has, to perme it has to permeate our total being. But it cannot permeate our total being until it penetrates our mind. That's why we have no manifestation of what God has declared for our life. It has an effect on our consciousness. Well, when I said this right here, you got so quiet. Didn't it get quiet in the Baptist church? It says, <laughs> so with the vision, there is a law that will govern the fulfillment of it. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Written in the tablets of your hearts. Where you will no longer operate out of the carnal mind. You mean there's a place that you can operate in God that who you used to be and what you've been exposed to will no longer infiltrate that place. I'm here to tell you, yes, it is. Dog gonna tell you, there's a place in here. That I'm telling you, doors were shut and they will remain shut. You would no longer operate under the kind of my it was all this limitation. Once the vision of your of our true reality registers in our consciousness, we will recognize that we are that people. And there's no more trying to be or trying to do certain things. But now in but it is now Christ.